We looked at the word of God and I'm still busy with uh, one wind, four wind directions, one director, part four this morning. And we're going to talk about the south wind. Last week we did talk about the north wind. Four directions, wind directions, north, south, east and west. So I've done a lot of things for you and bring to your heart, and this morning I want you to open your heart to understand exactly what is in the heart of God for His church on this earth during these days. I'm going to touch on a subject this morning a little bit that um, will bother you a little bit because, you know, there's no respect for each other anymore. And if that respect do not come back, you'll face big problems in your life. And that's what the wind of the south is all about. All right. I'm going to read for you out of Ephesians chapter 1, 4, verse 11 to 15. That's my theme uh, scripture. And I want you to open your heart this morning. Amen. Tell yourself, I am going to shut me out. Everything that uh, is my perception. No more. I want to walk the walk. Jesus Christ wants me to walk. All right. Ephesians 4, verse 11 tot 15. En hy het gegeer sommige as apostels en anders as profete en ander evangeliste. Ander as herders en leraars. Om die heilige stoeteris vir die dienstwerk. Tot opbouwing van die lichaam van Christus. Luister baie mooi. Vers 13. Totdat ons allemaal kom tot die eenheid van die geloof. Unity. And from the kennis, the knowledge of the Son of God. And I preach about that. Who's the Son of God? Tot a volwassen man. Tot die mate van die volle groot in Christus. Vers 14. So that ons nie meer kinders sal wees. Wat soos golde geslinger en jyn en weer gedraai word. Dier elke wind van lering. Dier die bedreerrui van die mense. And we talk about the winds. The Bible, the Afrikaans Bible praat van winde van lering. English Bibles talk about the winds of doctrine. Bedreerai van die mens, dier sleeheid en lustigheid tot dwaling te bring. Vers 15, maar terwijl ons in liefde die ware betrag en alles so opgroei en om, wat die hoof is namelijk Christus. Ephesians 4, vers 11 to 15, en die gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Now, Looking to this verse, the Bible says, and he gave some. Everyone say, and God gave some. Put it in your heart. And remember that during the message this morning. For the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. And we talk about there's only four winds that God control. The north, the south, the east, and the west. But there's winds that men created on earth. Doctrine, winds of doctrine that must lead the church of Jesus Christ. And also your reason why you are safe and why you are here on this earth. Listen carefully. By the slight of men, by the cunning of graftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking, listen carefully, but speaking the truth in love. Now, when you lie to somebody, you do not love them. Talk the truth. And truth will always confront you and hurt you. But truth got the dynamics in it to heal you and to set things right in your life. May grow up into all things which is the head, even Christ. Right. You got it. Say to somebody else. Let it be. Preach it, Pastor. Be careful what you say now, because I'm going to preach it this morning. 
I'm going to look into a scripture and I'm going to explain the scripture. We're going to open this one in Acts chapter 27, verse 9 to 15. And I'm going to use the scripture to lay the foundation and let you understand. So listen carefully when I read the scripture for you and pick up with me when I start to explain the scripture. And on Acts 27, verse 9 to 15. En omdat een geruime tijd verloop en die skeepvaart al gevaarlijker geworden het, om die vastheid ook al voorbij was. Nou, jullie was Paulus op pad naar Rome toe, want hij het een beroep op die keizer, om voor die keizer te staan. Alright, so is op pad, op die see, op pad naar Rome toe. En toen die vastheid voorbij was, hierdie vastheid is the tradition of the Jews, the, the, the fast of the Jews. When it was over, het Paulus hulle gewaarske en gesê, manne, ek sien dat die, dat die reis, hoor nou baie mooi, wie het hulle gewaarske? Wie het hulle gewaarske? Paul. Paul. Right. So there was something, somebody on the boat with an anointing. Daar was iemand op die boot met de salving. Listen carefully. Luister. Manne, ek sien dat die reis met ramp en groot skade, skade verbonden sal wees. Nie alleen vir die vraag en die skip nie, maar ook vir ons leven. Maar, hier is de probleem. Maar, die hoofman oor honderd het meer aan die stierman en die eienaar van die skip gegloe as aan die woorde van Paulus. En omdat die hawe nie geskik was om daar te oorwinter nie, het die meerderheid aangeraai om ook daar vandaan af te vaar en indien moeilijk in Phoenix te bereik om te oorwinter en een hawe in Kreta wat ople na die suidwes en na die noordwes verskillende winde. Suidwes wind, noordwes wind. It's not from God. Listen carefully. And to the sidewind sachis, we're not buying away. To the sidewind sachis, why? We talk about the south wind this morning. Het hulle gedink dat hulle voor, hul voorneme kon uitvoer en die ankers gelig en langs krete voorbij geseil, maar nie lang daarna nie het een storm van Eru Clidon genoem word, daar vandaan neergeslaan en toe die skip meegesleep is, en nie teen die wind op hom kan seil nie, het ons dit opgegee en weggedrijf. Want daar die skrip, kyk baie mooi, en hoor baie mooi wat ek vanmorgen vir jou gaan bedien. Acts 27 verse 9 to 15, Now when much time was spent, that was Paul on his way to Rome, and when sailing was now dangerous, now dangerous, because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only for the landing and, and ship, but also of our lives. Verse 11, Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the church uh, the chip more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Spoken by Paul. Listen carefully. People are more into to listen to all the stuff around them, all the politics and stuff going around, as to listen to the anointing of God. And that's the problem today. That's all about what the south wind is all about to bring us back to the point that we trust the anointed of God because God appointed them. God appointed They're not evoked in. They are appointed by God. That makes the difference. Listen carefully. And because the heaven was not commodious to the winter in, the more part advice to a depart Thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenix, 
and they to winter, which is an haven of Creator and life towards the southwest and northwest. That's the problem. Southwest, northwest. You're on a run, wrong direction. Keep your direction correct. Check your doctrine. That's very important to understand it. And when the south wind, listen carefully, when the south wind, and we talk about south wind this morning, blew softly, softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, losing things, they sailed close by Creator. But not long after there arose against it a te uh, tempestuous wind called Eurycleidon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. Now talking about the south wind, the south wind speaks of godly insight by way of his will. Speaking of God's insight in your life by way of his will for your life. Die seide wind verwees na die Godspraak in jou leven, bewijzen van sy wil vir jou leven. Nou gaan ek handlinge 27 vir jou oopkloof vers 9 tot 10. Maak die verklaring, God plant Gods manne op die boot. Paul on the ship was planted there on the way to Rome. And the anointed man stand up. And bring a message of power and anointing. Warn the people on the ship. We face dangerous times on this sea. Is gevaarlijke tijd wat voor ons wacht. Gods mannen gepland door God. En die begin dat ik veel gelezen in versies 4 vers 11. En God het gegeven. God appointed. It's not men appointed. If you got a question mark behind my name, I'm not appointed by the assembly of Messina. I'm placed here and anointed by God with 45 years behind my back in the ministry. And I want you to understand how God moved through my ministry to warn the church for things to happen. Now, it's very easy this morning to preach for your prosperity. It's very easy to uplift your spirit and charge you up. But we face terrible times and people are asleep. The church are asleep. There's no church that's awake because why we still fool around. We're not talking the truth, waiting for these times that we're living in. Als we moet wakker word om te verstaan, God plant Gods manne. En hierdie Gods manne spreek. En wanneer hierdie Gods manne spreek, moet jy begin en luister, want is God wat het al gepoint het. 2 Timotheus 1 vers 9, God red en hy roep met de godelijke roeping. Don't question your pastors. Don't question them. If they speak the truth, stand behind them because they are anointed and appointed by God, not by men. Not by men. That's why Paul teaches us in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, saying, follow me as I follow Christ. That's the duty of the church to do it because why? God appointed an anointed man to do the job for him on earth. He spent time in his prayer room preparing the message to warn the church, to give the church directions, to let them understand what it's all about and the time we're living in, to correct you, to discipline you, to teach you, to bring you to the fullness of Christ and understanding of the Son of God. That's very important to understand that. Now, what was the doel? 
van God. Om mannen te roepen. Wat was die doel van God? Dat hij mannen appointed. Die doel was om jou toe te rust. To equip you. To make you strong for the wings that come. And blow the wings of doctrine. The southwest, not the south. But in between these wings created by men. God appointed. That's what the Bible teaches me in Psalms. Do not touch my anointed. Do not touch him. Because God deals with his anointed. If we step out of the order, God is there. God didn't give nobody, nobody, the authority to condemn or be a backbiter behind the back of the anointed man of God. The south wind is blowing and is coming to us today in this time we're living in because there's no respect anymore for the anointed of God that God anointed. And if you do not believe that I'm anointed, then I, I want to ask the question, why are you following me? Why are you in the church this morning? You are here because you trust me. You trust me to teach you. You trust me to lead you in the whole truth. Give me a pastor that can nail it on the head and say to me, listen, and I'm going to quote the scripture this morning the last time I quote that scripture, a lot of the people run away. But thank God you still stay. That's the main thing. Because my truth will set you free, man. God anointed. God appointed. He called man and he put man to speak into your life. His perfect will. I'm not with the things that people said, I've got something from God and suck it out of the thumbs. Just by a, a feeling. Give me scripture when you stand up and say, say, thou said the Lord God Almighty. The word of God backed it up. Always. You ask me, do I believe in prophets? No, sir. It's fulfilled. I believe in prophecy. Let me understand it's Clearly, the apostles and also the prophets is already fulfilled. They laid a foundation and we must be careful how we built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. God used the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers today to teach you and to lift you up. The south wind is blowing. It's blowing unto you and me. It's coming with force unto to you and me. Don't Go in the wrong direction, southwest. Stay in the wind. Stay in the wind. And I mentioned it last week that the wind is the Holy Spirit that blow during this time in the life of His church to wake His church up for the time we're living in. Look around you, you will find out. Take it on your ear and then sing you what in the world and the gang is. Het ons so baie opstande gesien in ons leven. Het ons so baie beleef dat hulle plekke beginne afbrand en mense in opstand kom by duisende in strate en vaar. Het ons ooit beleef in ons leven. Het sê something. Het sê something. Wake up church. God appointed men to warn you. Paulus was op die boot for a reason. And God spoke to him. And he started to talk to these people in charge of that boat. And that was the problem. They reject the anointed one. And get deep into trouble. In Psalms, chapter 135, verse 7. Hy was, hy wat die dampe laat opgaan. 
van die einde van die aarde af. Bliksemstralen bij die reen maak, die wind uit zijn skatkamers laat uitgaan. Hier causes the vipers to ascend from the ends of the earth and make lightning for the rain and bringing the wind out of his treasuries. There's a wind that blow out of the treasuries of God. You are lucky to listen to the word of God this morning. You, so, you, you can count your lucky due to the fact out of God's treasuries, there's a wind coming from the south and blowing over this church and it's moving. And those that listen to the word of God, those that listen to the anointed of God, they will understand what the perfect will of God is for this time we're living in. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of division. Why? There's no respect anymore for pastors. There's no respect anymore for leadership. And that's the wind that blow and warn us, get back to the point, then God can give us direction and let this perfect will come alive in our life. Subaya, subaya. Say, I don't know what, I don't know who. I give up. I'm not giving up. It's the best time in my whole life to see people running around and mess themselves up. Church, we need to listen. We need to pick up. We need to stand up for the truth because there's a wind that blow. The Spirit of God is busy moving. We cannot make any excuses anymore. No more excuses. Daar wordt vandaag meer geloof geplaatst in die mensen, in beheer en in die politiek. En in die gesalfdes, as in die gesalfdes van die jaren. We listen more to politics. We listen more to the news. We listen more to the, the, what people say. Ungodly people. Scientists that do not believe in God. They are atheists. And what they say, we believe it. But when the anointing speak up, we are a fight with each other. There's division in the church, division in the houses, divisions in families. Listen, we need to listen to the south wind that blows soft. It blows soft. It's not a wind that, it's a soft wind coming in. It's a soft wind. You must listen very, very clearly. Because it's going to pass you by. And you will be without the direction. We need the Holy Spirit of the self blowing to give us directions. What the politics say. We jump high as that. If the pastor say, let's fast and pray for a whole week. Brother, it's dangerous to mention that so that we can search for the kingdom of God to come down on this earth and we pro proclaim on this earth so that God can rule in the life of our people. You think I preach this message? That I'm cross? No. I love you. Out of the depth of my heart to correct you, to bring you in line with God. The Bible teaches me very clearly. The word of God is given to us for teaching, correction. So we need to get back where we forgot about God's way of doing things. We cannot take things in, in our hand and try to control God's spirit. We need the anointed of God to stand up and speak the truth. When I preach these messages around the world, especially in America, brother, they jump on the, on the chairs, man, and shouting, preach it, pastor. But you preach in South Africa. Oh, my. You're in the dog box. 
next Sunday, you're going to suffer to get the people again. But it's time, South Africa, that we need to wake up and shake up and stand up and do something about our lifestyle on this earth. We need to move up. We need, we need to let God take control with the soft south wind blow. You must tune your ear in. It's a soft wind. It's not a thunderstorm that's running on top of you. No, it's a soft wind that blows. Look to somebody close to you because why it looks like you, you you want to kill me this morning with the expression on your face. Just smile for the somebody. Your face will not break, man. Come on. Come on. In verse 12, lees ons van Acts 27, but ek wil verklaar het. And the majority and the majority, listen, the majority follow the captain and the owner of the boat on top of the anointing of God. The majority. God is not moving with the majority. God is moving with the obedience. If you obey God's word and stand behind God's word and listen what I'm teaching and preaching to you in Messina, then we can see revival coming in. Then the south wind will blow and lift us up and we will experience the dragons get loose. Demons will flee. That's what we want. People get healed. We want to see some guys that be messed up by a motorbike. Brandon, get his leg back again and jump. A miracle need to be happen. The church needs power. God cannot move because we, we didn't listen to the soft wind blowing. We want screaming and shouting. We miss the power of God. We need to get in our prayer rooms. We need to search our hearts to find out what is the perfect will of God of the south wind that blow, especially in this day we're living in. Amen. Amen. Listen carefully. God is not working together with the majority. God is moving with people that obey his word. Amen. Listen to Psalms chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. Psalms in verse 1 to 4. Wel gelukzalig. Wat meen dat woord? Wel gelukzalig. Wie is blij? Er is die man. Wat nie wandel in die raad van die goddeloose en staan in die weg van die sondags nie en sit in die kring van die spotters nie. It's amazing. It shocked me during these days to see how Christians, how Christians act Ons kan nie luister na die raad van die goddeloose nie. We cannot. It's impossible. Ons het nodig om die wil van God te soek, om te hoor, wat is Godse insprake. Kom kerk toe. Nee, my brother. Jy weet, my oele sê het nou laat afgegaan, my alarm, jy weet. Ek word moest net syk op sonda, en op donderda, en op dinsda. Come on, church. Ek verstaan wanneer mense siek is. Ek verstaan wanneer mense moet werk. But lazy people, oh man. It's time now to wake up, shake up and do something. Amen. Ons kan nie, ons kan nie toelaat dat a lazy spirit get hold of us. Get to your church where your pastor preached the truth. There's a lot of churches that do not preach the truth. They preach the Roman Catholic doctrine. Be careful. That's why I'm saying, check your doctrine. Get to the point that you can listen what is God's word for your life so that you can follow his perfect will. 
Amen. That's what the Bible teaches me in Romans 12 verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. We do not search for revival. We search for transformation. Come on, church. Everyone wants revival. Revive what? Lazy spirits? No, sir. All this giving is not going on in the church? No. We need transformation. That people get transformed from sin to righteousness. From earthly stuff to heavenly stuff. And walk the walk. And start to talk the talk. Amen. Man, you're going to hate me after this service, man. Or you're going to love me. But I want to tell you, we need to get in order with God. If not, we're going to miss it. You are not called by God to teach. God appointed men to teach. And to correct people, to set the people on their places to understand. You cannot fool with the kingdom of God. You're going to break somebody. You're going to understand me one, one thing in your life, my friend. Be careful. God paid the price with his own blood for people. And if you're a shepherd, you, and the moment you are become a leader, a leader, a disciple, can only be a disciple if you got followers. You cannot be a leader if you haven't got followers. You need followers to, to follow you and you lead them. You direct them. You guide them. And the Bible said, Ons staan in die weg van die son daar nie. Die atheist sê, en vrachtig ons geloof wat die atheist sê. But God sê, and then we, nee, ek verstaan nie, dis nou hoog te, te, te boek aan my plek, my, my viermaak plek, as God sê. God het moest gewaarski, vriend. God het gewaarski, ons spreek nie vir jou lekker packets uh, godsdienst nie. Ons spreek nie vir jou boodskap, wat ons jou net van perlang is, en jy is alright nie. Nee, jy is nie alright nie, get up! If jy is alright, dan was misschien al alright. Wat misschien al is nie alright nie. Alright. Maar sy baha is in die wet van die Heere en hy oordink sy wet dag en nacht en hy sal wees soos een boom wat geplant is by waterstrome wat sy vruchte gee op sy tyd. Luister baie mooi. Waarvan die blare nie verwelk nie en alles wat hy doen voor hy voorspoedig uit so is die goddeloose mens nie maar soos kaf wat in die wind verstrooi word. You see, if you follow the southwest wind, it's just cough. I get for Rosafra, my English is so useless, man. Uh, I cannot talk uh, Venda, and I try to talk Venda. My English is bad, worse than my, my, my Venda. But what is the English word for cough? And I say, shaf. Is that the word? Shaf. Right. The wind is going to blow you like shaf away. And listen carefully. It's not blowing the child of God away. He's blowing the ungodly away. Come on, church. You talk about the rapture. Come on. Who's going to be taken away by the rapture? The ungodly. The godly stay behind. We rule this earth. And that's what we need to proclaim. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Get excited, man. Matthew 13 is very clear on it. He said, when they, he took away all the shaf and all the ungodly, then the light of the godly will shine. And nobody, nobody will stop them. Because we proclaim the kingdom of God. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I cannot listen to the counsel of ungodly people. If a doctor operates on me, the first question I ask him, are you a Christian? Are you born again? You do not touch my body. If you are atheist, 
Ons gaan so baie na die gesielkindige toe. Vraag hom net, gloe in die Heer Jesus. But you do not get to your pastor's office because you, need, you know that he's going to steal your tappets for you. And set you right to get you on the right way with the anointing behind it. Friends, we need to understand God's perfect rule in life. That's heavenly protocol. Stick to a heavenly protocol. We need to get it back. That's the wind that blows today. Listen carefully. And stand it in the way of the sinners. Nor sit it in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of God. Listen carefully. The English is much more beautiful in verse 2. And his law doth the meditate day and night. Meditate day and night. Come on, Fra, Nelly, Fra, for more. We meditate the word day and night. Who meditate the word of God day and night? But God must provide. God must heal me. God bring, must bring my wife back because I see so ugly. She chased me away. If you meditate on the word of God, you will get a surprise in your life. You mess around with all the stuff around you. Listen, meditate the word. So buy a frau for me, but the sonde. What is sin? How do you explain sin? What's wrong in the eyes of God? You know what's wrong in the eyes of God? When you stand on this earth, you ask the question for yourself. The things I'm going to do now, will God do it? If, do it. If not, stop it. Because it's going to mess you up. That's the wind of the south west wind blow. And get you on the wrong direction. Okay. All right. Tell somebody, yes, I love the message this morning. And I love the pastor also. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doth shall prosper. Hallelujah. Come on. Church, we need prosperity in our church. So that the pastor can buy him a double story house. Ah, oh, come on, man. I just test you guys. Are you awake? No, no, no. Prosperity is to, to build out the kingdom of God on this earth. To provide for those that haven't got. Amen. Not to make yourself rich. Amen. I'm only driving a Ford. I mean... Is the worst thing that you can drive from the mother earth as a fort. But I'm, 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 I'm happy. You take me from point A to point Z. Safe the same way you drove with your Toyota. <laughs> Friends, listen. We need to open our eyes to understand the word of God. Because if the anointed man preached for you the word, you take it, you live it. You meditate on it until it becomes a reality in your life. Okay. This will be like a, a tree planted by the riverside of water that brings forth his fruit and seasons and leaves also not wither. And whatsoever he doth, he shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drift away. Just take your way. You think you make it. You find out, man, something's going to happen and take all your money away. And you stand amazed. Why me, Lord? Why not you? God is busy talking to you this morning. Verse 13 of Acts 27. The south wind blows softly. I saw why. And say, lift for the men. Vask you. God ons verder, dier sy heilige gees, he warns us through his Holy Spirit this morning, there's a soft wind that blow, it's a south wind that blow, you must listen, listen very carefully, to understand the will of God for your life, 
Otherwise, you're going to miss the will of God. And if you miss the will of God, you'll miss your life. Amen. So we do, cannot allow it in our life. Sorry, sir. We are anointed by God, man. We are appointed by God. We are children of God. People say, come on, belay after my aunt. All says, I'm all No, 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 no. I'm not a sinner. I'm a child of God. That's a condemnation churches put upon people. And people confess it without thinking what they say. And the Bible says, what you say, you will get it. Come on, church. Come on. Right. Are you with me? The south wind is blowing softly. You must listen carefully, otherwise you're going to miss it. You're going to be in the direction of southwest. And that's a dangerous one. That southwest wind will kill you on your way. Will kill you on your way. Is the voice of God through His Spirit talking this morning to us? And people will want always to listen to messages that can soft serve them. But when God speaks to their heart, they don't want to accept it. They follow the majority. And that's where the problems start. With the majority. Because they are ungodly people. They do not know the voice of God. They do not spend and meditate the word of God until it becomes a reality. And this is script as I come on all the heart, I always at my car. There are away when I when I mention the scripture in Ephesians 5, verse 18. Muni drong word van weine. Eish. Eish. People are so cross at me in this town when I mention the scripture. But the Bible said it. Muni drong word van weine, van daar is. Losbandigheid, maar wordt vervul. Come on. We put more liquor in our body as the Holy Spirit. Maar pastoor is een verkeerd. Oké, ga aan. Ek gaan net een nacht bykie met jou vrou uit. Dis was nie verkeerd nie. How do you argue? How do you argue the stuff? If the sun set you free, you free in. You don't mess it with sun. It's going to kill you on your way. You're on southwest, west wind direction. You're not in the direction of the south wind that blows soft. Money drunk word van weine. Maar word vervul met die geest van God. Want daar is losbandigheid van die te veel aan jou het. And be not drunk with wine. Wherein is excess, but be full with the Spirit. You see, people are going to suffer. When we preach about be full with the Holy Spirit, people say, that's not for me. That's biblical. Read Acts 2 from verse 1. Read Acts 1. That's the promise of the Father. He poured out His Spirit and all of a sudden, what happens? They was drunk, not by wine, but by the. <sighs> you watch me when when Joey, when she <sighs> make appointment with me. I'm gonna spend time with God, then I leave her alone. Because I say, jump in the bed. I do not touch her. She's full of liquor. Holy Spirit liquor. You cannot touch her. If I touch her, she starts talking tongues. But people said, oh, it's devilish. Friend, you think God will give us a demon spirit when we ask him and that's the promise of the Father and he poured out his spirit on the day of Pentecost? Come on, church. The Bible is very clear in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. He that speaketh in a tongue do not speak to men but by God. A mystery. A mystery. 
Pray in tongues. Sing in tongues. Worship God in tongues, man. It's time to wake up, church. It's time to understand the wind is coming from the south. We need the Holy Spirit. Those that listen to the Spirit of God is those that follow the anointing. Spend your time and ask God for directions. You see, not a so drunk word. Wat mense dink. So dronk geword van wat mense sê. Ons het so ver beweeg van die heilige geest af. Gaan wonder dat die mens ons so vastloopt in die storms van die tyd. Die weet twee leidtjes kom daar by een motorbike. Nou probeer hulle die motorbike start. Man, if you do not know the bike, you're going to damage yourself. Some guy buy a beautiful bike and he found out, man, that bike can slip underneath you. And you're going to buy a farm. That's the field there and fensters on the bike. Careful. I scope terug. And the car kill me net in your right. You start and you go. That's the way to understand, and I do it just to get your attention, to show, show you the wrong way to do it, the devil will hurt you. The right way, you just fight the good fight of faith. Follow my teachings a couple of months ago. Fight the good fight of faith. Let faith fight it for you, man. You just watch it. Man, it's like a dog. And there's some terrible guys wants to hurt you. You just loosen that dog and that dog take care of them, man. You just sit down there and say, Sa, fadom, fadom, ya. But the problem is we want to get involved. And they're going to knock you down. Don't play around with sin. He's going to knock you down. Send faith to fight the fight for you. Amen. Amen. Verse 14. Daar kom een wind. Genoem Iru Klidon. And that wind in Greek and the Greeks beteken wegloper. The English word levanter. Levanter. L-E-V-A-N-T-E-R. This wind <laughs> loop weg met jou. He run away with you. He take you away. From God's perfect will in your life. You will mess up your life. That's the purpose of this wind. And while they're on the sea, traveling on the sea, they doesn't listen to the anointed one. They don't listen to the impact of God that speak to a man that God can give them and, and, and understand his perfect will for what's going to happen. They listen to the majority. And off they go. And on that way, they found this wind coming. Man. And he messed that boat up. He messed it up. And I will tell you ask you for more. You don't too late that you're a wegloper. It's not time to play with God. It's time to stand for the year. Amen. Amen. Come on. Because this Suidwest wind gaan jou lei na bedrieglikheid toe. Gaan jou lei na schleeheid toe. Gaan lustiglik jou so verlei. Want ons is aardsgebonde. Ons doen wat die aarde en die mense sê ons moet doen. And we cannot allow that. Ons het vanmorgen nodig to listen to the wind that blow. Softly. Softly. Verse 15 say, and at the end, they give it up. At the end of your life, you will give it up because oh, you haven't got the foundation. You do not know where you, how many times I stand by deathbed of people that's busy dying and they look up to me and say, Pastor, I mess up. I mess up. Help me. I'm busy going to hell.
Help me. There was ideas in England. I will get on his name now. Every day of his life, he walked out of his house and swear unto God and curse him, screaming in the streets. He was an atheist. And the moment he went into the place where he's busy dying and he suffer, in his bedroom, they heard him blocks away screaming for grace. Screaming for grace. Shouting. And you know what? That guy passed away. You know what happens? God built a Bible press where his house was standing. And all of your Bibles, except a couple of years ago, was printed in that print of that house. Nowadays, it's printed in China. And we know what's coming from China. Brother, wake up. Don't be a mess around with all this, what do you that's Translations. Translations. Thank you. I just text you. You're still alive. It's time that we understand how the wind is blowing. You see, if you do not read the wind rightly, you go in the wrong direction. You need to understand what is the right direction God is moving in these days. He's blowing. You cannot move it. He's in control. You cannot do it. Nothing about it. God blows it. Amen. He's in control. Amen. He got the authority behind this wind. You either jump in or you lose out. It's time. It's time. Amen. There's so a lot of things that I need to teach you this morning, but I'm going to leave it here. Shout, amen. amen. Yeah, yeah. Work it. I want to close with it. Work it. Say. 4 vers 16. Word wakker. Noor de wind. We talked about the north wind last week. Lothering God is busy cleaning you up. And come, say de wind. God's inspraak in your life. Dear why my tuin say, let my balsam gear uitvloei, let my beminde in sy tuin kom, en van sy kostelike vruchte eet. Awake, O north wind, and come, thou south wind, blow upon my garden, that my spices therefore may flow, flow out. Let my beloved come into the garden and eat his present fruits. Amen. Amen. You know what's so nice? When I visit people, do the house visitation, man, you, you, you come into, they already have the bride ready. They already have the golden plates and golden forks and ready. Man, there's always something to bless you with. Huh? And you get this joyful. You, you smell the fragrance of this house. But in some houses you walk in, brother, <laughs> it's, it's dangerous. You do not know if you're going to get a life out of that house. It's dangerous. It's time, church, that we need to get the order back. Respect your pastors. Respect the anointed. Respect the leaders. Follow them. That leads you in the, the right direction. That's the wind that blow this morning. Listen. The wind blow this morning. In Hebrews 13 verse 7, 17. Wees gehoorzaam aan jylle voorgangers en onderdanig. Want jylle waak vir jylle siele. As diegene wat rekenskap moet gee. So dat jylle dit met blijdskap. So dat jylle dit met blijdskap kan doen. En nie al sigtend nie. Want dit is vir jylle nie nuttig nie. God. Deel met sy aanstellings. Dis nie jy wat met my kom deel nie. God deel met my. He will get me when I go wrong. 
It's not for you to do it. Listen. Listen. The English Bible says, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account. Now, if you do not come to church that night, man, I cannot sleep because God is waking me up. For you, it's so easy. Because you've got a lazy spirit, you don't want to come to church. But for me, it's not so easy. It's not so easy. Because I must give account. You know what's the problem today? The problem today is we just stay away from church. We do not phone our pastor and say, Pastor, I've got a problem. I cannot be in church this morning. Now, worry what's happening with you. You think I do not worry about you? The Holy Spirit worried about you. There's a wind that blow, a soft wind, soft wind, and wake me up at night times. Said, where is that Zimbabwean? Is he still on the road? Because we hear nothing from her. When Ross was in Central Africa, man, I was on, jumping on. Once in a while, he sent me, it's okay, Pastor. It's okay, Pastor. I want you to understand one thing. You cannot mess up your pastors. You cannot mess up the man that we anointed and appointed by God that speak the truth. I do not talk about pastors that uh, is there for their own gain. I talk about people that are not scared to look you in your eyes and say, it's wrong, brother. Because I love you. I want you to, to see the Lord coming. I want you to see, to see you, how you prosper. Listen, that's why God appointed men to look after you. Amen. Amen. So this south wind is blowing this morning. You know, in the south wind, pop up. So is Marie. Oh, my. Wake up. If I passed away after a couple of years, because I plan to become 100 years old. So I warn you guys, you're going to be messed up for still a lot of times with me. But you will always remember what I teach you guys. You will always remember that. Because it's coming through time that I spent in my office with God, searching the perfect will to give you directions, to go in the right direction where the wind is blowing. The south wind is blowing, friend. God appointed man to give input in your life. You preach the word. I'm not listening to it anymore. I'm sick and tired of all these prophets going around and all these apostles going around and made themselves appointed apostles and prophets just to, to fill up the churches. I attend the church where the prophet uh, was um, uh, uh, invited to come and preach at the church and he's prophesied, or prophesied the whole time. And he mentioned one thing that shocked me. He, say, he said, when you want your church full, just start to prophesy. I said, oh Lord, you know what? People are mess up. We do not follow prophets. We follow Jesus Christ and true anointed man of God. Listen. We cannot listen to the ungodly anymore. We need to listen to the anointed one. God wants his perfect will in your life. He will di discipline you. Amen. That's the reason. When God appointed man to discipline you, to get you on the right way, so when the wind blow, you go in the right direction. Not to the wind that's going to damage you on your way on that sea. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Church, I plead to Messina's church, and I plead to everyone that's here this morning, let's make a commitment unto God today. I said, Lord, I commit myself no matter what. I mean, you're already rejected by your family. You did the fact you make some 
statements. Let's stand bold. Make a commitment unto the Lord. Let's build the kingdom of God on this earth together. Together. Without you, I can do nothing. Without me, you can do a lot of things. But listen, I'm here for one reason, and that's to fulfill the will of God and preach it to your heart to see you prosper going forth. Get healed. I mean, how many times I mentioned it, and I want to mention it this morning again. I did come through cancer. God healed me from cancer. Some of my friends in the same time also pick up. Not so bad as what I pick it up. We buried them already. Joey pick up cancer. You know what it cost us? To meditate the word of God day and night. We listen to all this good uh, information we receive. I said to Joey, put it away. We're going to listen to what the word of God is saying. And the word of God put it very clearly. It's not only a word by my stripes you are healed. And we start to live it. There was mornings that I pick her up and we walk step by step with each other. But we said, by your wounds we are healed. We are healed. We are healed. And it gets through to his uh, body. And today, man, see something to look at. Yeah, and I love it. I love it, brother. And due to that fact, I love God much more. Because he's a good God. God wants to heal you. God wants to take care of you. But listen, let's get together and understand and respect each other. And have respect for. Because this south wind it's a soft wind that blow. It don't make a noise. It's a soft wind that blow. And get to your heart. Amen.